Hi, welcome. If you're here for the LSS NCA web, uh, webinar, we will be getting started in about three minutes. So thank you. Hi, my name is Jacob Barclay, and I am the Chief Development Officer for Lutheran Social Services of the National Capital Area. Um, welcome to our um, Welcoming New Neighbors Town Hall. Um, we are so glad uh, for you to join us at, uh, at this time. We, we've got a lot of uh, exciting updates to share with you and also want to talk through some ways uh, to get involved. Um, but first, I just want to say that um, we know that this work requires um, so, like th this work is both complex and rewarding and it takes um, a thousand hands, hearts and minds along the way. And so we just really appreciate all the, all the support that um, we've had from the community um, and we're, we're looking forward to sharing, sharing some updates. So can we, the next slide. For those of you who are, are uh, who are new to LSSNCA, um, the Lutheran Social Services of the National Capital Area has been around since uh, 1917. Um, we've served uh, throughout the DC metro area and Virginia and Maryland uh, with refugee and immigrant and resettlement and workforce development programs, family and children's services, including foster care for unaccompanied refugee minors, health and wellness services and healthy relationships education. Next slide. We, uh, I'm gonna just give you a little overview of, of, uh, of, the, um, of the town hall. Um, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna turn it over in a, in a second to our CEO, Chris and Peck, who will be uh, giving, catching us up on some updates with, with LSS NCA. Um, and then we'll um, turn it over to our director of community engagement, Christine Dunn, who is also with us uh, to share more information about, how, uh, about our, our different programs that we have at LSS NCA for welcoming our neighbors. Um, and then I'll, I'll share some other ways for, um, to get involved. And then we'll have time at the end for, for questions and answers. Um, you feel free to uh, drop some questions in the chat along the way. And um, we'll, we'll, we can answer questions both in, in uh, real time and then um, leave plenty of time at the end to answer additional questions. Next slide. So I'll start off by introducing our CEO. Um, Kristen Peck, who serves as our Chief Executive Officer um, of Ellis and NCA, um, which was the 2022 recipient of the Lutheran Services in America's MICA Award for its in, uh, work in advancing equity and justice. Kristen's career spans 20 years in human services in the fields of child welfare and refugee and immigration services. 
Kristen has testified before Congress on protection needs for unaccompanied children and served as a subject matter expert on unaccompanied children at the UN Refugee Agency's annual consultation meetings in Geneva. Kristen's migration and immigration expertise draws on both her national and her international experience. She served on several official delegations to identify protection needs of refugees, asylum seekers, women and accompanied children, and victims of human trafficking. Uh, these include assessments in Central America, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Myanmar, uh, Thailand, Indonesia, Jordan, and several other countries. Um, she's also deployed um, to Malaysia to build child protection standard operating procedures for gender-based violence prevention activities within the Burmese refugee community. So you can also keep up with Kristen uh, as we're trying to work, we're trying to improve our Twitter skills uh, at uh, PAC underscore Kristen on Twitter. Uh, and I'll hand it over to, to Kristen. Thanks so much, Jacob. And thank you everyone for joining us tonight. It's so nice to see some familiar names. And to those of you who are new to LSSNCA, welcome. We are so glad that you are here and grateful that you decided to take time on your Thursday evening to be with us. We know there are many things that you could do, and it's such an honor to be with you. Um, and as Jacob mentioned, as we chat, if you have questions, please do drop them in the Q&A. We have an excellent team working behind the scenes to answer your questions in real time. And then we'll also have a Q&A at the end with our panel. Uh, I just also, for those of you who've been with LSS for a while, I want to thank you so much for your support, especially over the last two years, which have been record-breaking for LSS NCA. Um, we went from serving the same number of people per month that we had been serving per year. Uh, and that was precipitated by the Afghan crisis and the, the evacuation of our Afghan allies from Afghanistan and our need to ensure that they were welcomed in our communities. And so thank you for helping us uh, show a strong uh, welcome in the DMV and for working along our, our side as we continue to work with other populations arriving daily at our doors to include Ukrainians, uh, Burmese, Cameroonians, Eritreans, and Syrians. Next slide, please. So um, in the last fiscal year, LSS NCA served 6,500 clients. Um, this was from more than 48 countries. And the top five countries of origin were Afghanistan, El Salvador, Ukraine, Guatemala, and Cameroon. Next slide. And so you can see a map here of the country of origin of our program participants. And next slide, please. At LSS NCA, our vision is to create a community of well being where all people thrive. And so we, you know, we do that by through person-centered services. And this shows each of our departments. We serve people through our refugee and immigrant services department. Um, we provide initial what's called reception and placement services. And those are services that help our new arriving neighbors as soon as they come into the country with meeting them at the airport, taking them to their first home, in the United States, we identify that home in advance and we work with all of you to help ensure that that home is furnished. We also provide extended case management and employment services. Um, our goal is to not just be involved at the onset, at the, at the initial uh, crisis, but really long-term to help our new neighbors um, become self-sufficient and really be included in their local communities. So we have a really robust employment services program that's grown dramatically over the past two years is we're really looking to um, expand our services to help contribute to the well-being of the people we serve. Um, one of the recent areas of development, which we're looking to expand, are our recertification services. And those are services that aim to help um, our new neighbors become recertified in the careers they had in their home countries. Um, I'm sure you are all familiar with the fact that many uh, new arriving refugees and immigrants are underemployed. And so you'll see doctors and nurses who are, um, you know, driving Ubers, for example. And so we really want to help them become uh, trained and certified in the U.S. to practice in that same career that they had in their home country. And so that's an area where we are um, really growing. We, we have a, a small pilot and are looking to expand that pilot 
um, so that we can serve more. Next, we have our services for new Americans. And within this department, we provide citizenship and immigration services. This is another area where we're rapidly growing, where we have attorneys on staff. And to meet the need of the more than 6,500 clients we've served in the past year um, who need assistance with their immigration paperwork, um, our attorneys have mobilized the community and they host um, pro se asylum clinics. And those, uh, those workshops allow volunteers to help um, people applying for asylum. Uh, and, and they do that through the guidance of the immigration attorneys. And so they're helping um, uh, take the narrative of the program participants and ensuring that the attorneys can take the information, the application, prepare it for submission as an asylum application. We also have our Care for Newcomers program. This program provi provides mental health and other psychosocial services to people seeking asylum and other forms of humanitarian relief. And then we have a Trafficking Victim Assistance Program, which provides case management to survivors of human trafficking. And then we have our Children, Youth, and Family, uh, Family Services Department. And this department provides foster care to unaccompanied children who arrive with refugee status and also to children who um, arrive and become eligible for the program through other types of qualifying immigration relief, for example, as a victim of human trafficking or as an asylee. Um, and then we provide adoption services, and that includes home studies to families pursuing adoption and also break the seal services. And these are for um, families who are wishing to reunify. And then we do youth development and wellness services, and we provide this service in the, the DC school district. We are, um, our courses are embedded in the curriculum and our team um, is in the schools providing education on healthy relationships, mentoring, um, help with setting goals. And then we also do summer camps. And this, the origins of this program, um, it started in the 1990s. And at that time, it was responding to young people impacted by HIV AIDS. Next slide. So between 2021 and 2022, we provided refugee and immigrant services to 7,000 new neighbors. And this was after um, four years in the previous administration of serving about 500 people a year. So our growth has been dramatic. And as you can imagine, um, we are as an organization um, uh, growing, our, growing our staff, growing our, changing our policies and our procedures and, and really scaling up to, to meet the need that we see in our community. Next slide. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about our Good Neighbor Partner and Championships Program. Um, next slide. Thank you. So for more than um, a decade, you have been welcoming refugees to the DC metro area alongside LSS NCA through our Good Neighbor Partners and Championships, ch sorry, Champions Program. This program was founded by LSNCA and our congregational partners, um, and it's expanded from Good Neighbor Partners to Good Neighbor Partners and Champions to accommodate our congregations, groups of colleagues, friends, and clubs at colleges, and more. And this is, uh, refugee resettlement has always been a private partner, private public partnership. And we would not be able to do our work of welcome without the help of our community. Um, and so this is a program that helps us help our newcomers with setting them up with, um, with sponsors who can help do things like set up uh, their first home in the new country, help them with um, practicing English, resume writing, interview practice. Next slide. And over the past two years, 600 homes have been set up by our good neighbor partners and champions. And this is for our new neighbors, um, their, their first home in the United States. Next slide. So one thing that you may have heard about um, a lot in the news over the past uh, few months is Welcome Corps. So I did wanna share a little bit about what Welcome Corps is. Um, Welcome Corps is a consortium found, funded by the Department of State and it's managed by Community Sponsorship Hub in 
in partnership with a few organizations that have been working with refugees and immigrants for decades. Um, and that's Church World Service, International Rescue Committee, International Refugee Assistance Project, and then also, oh, and Integrated Refugee and Immigration Services. And then also Welcome US, which is a newer organization that has really been set up to help pilot this, um, this Welcome Corps model. So in this model, groups of at least five American citizens or permanent resident adults can apply to privately sponsor the resettlement of assigned refugees. And the groups that apply for sponsorship are onboarded and vetted and trained. And the private sponsors are required to independently raise funds to cover essentials provided to refugees in their first 90 days in their new communities. And this includes things like food, clothing, rent, and transportation. And the private sponsors take on the full responsibility to provide essential necessities to refugees for the first 90 days um, rather than the traditional resettlement model where that is the responsibility of the resettlement agency. So this pushes a little bit more or significantly more of the responsibility um, to uh, the sponsor, so to the community groups. Next slide. Um, and so there are some challenges and a lot of opportunities as, as anything with this model. Um, some of the challenges are it does bypass the typical refugee resettlement process, um, including um, funding for that initial reception and placement. Um, and because of that, the resettlement agencies don't always know when people are arriving through this private sponsorship program because the private sponsors are not necessarily connected to a resettlement agency. And so there is some potential for breakdown in these sponsor uh, arrangements um, uh, if they have you know, difficulty ac accessing essentials or um, you know, given um, the needs of, of our newly arriving neighbors, um, the, the trauma needs. And so we are really working to do outreach to identify um, sponsors and let them know that we are um, able to help support. The opportunity though, is that there are more than 32.5 million refugees around the world. And 1% um, of that number are resettled um, every year. And so this provides another pathway for resettlement. Um, and we are, a, you know, we really believe that people need more safe and legal pathways um, to when they're fleeing violence and persecution. It also mobilizes the greater American community in the work of welcome. And we know that when Americans are in relationship with, with refugees and they're more supportive of um, refugee admissions programs and the US um, admitting refugees into the country. Um, and it so grows support and advocates for the resettlement system. If and when the second Welcome Corps phase is implemented, it will increase the number of referrals to the refugee admissions program through personal referrals who would be um, approved and vetted. Uh, next slide. Um, so I am going to turn it over to our Director of Community Engagement, Christine Dunn. Thank you, Kristen. Um, thank you to all of you who are here this evening. Also, I'm, I feel so thankful um, to be with you. Um, I feel also very honored to serve as the Director for Community Engagement because I know that the work we do makes real and tangible differences in people's lives. Um, our engagement team is now under development and continues to grow. And one of the primary reasons for this is um, not only do we want to be able to better uh, support our families, we also want to be better able to support our volunteers, our partners and our co-sponsors who volunteer through us with our GMP program. And I'll get to that in just a few moments. As a director of community engagement team, I oversee our welcome program, good neighbor partners and champions, along with volunteers. Our team is made up of fabulous, dedicated people who care deeply about LSS NCA's mission and really want to support community members because our community members also care deeply about our mission. And we're so thankful for that. One of the engagement team's primary goals is to both accompany participants um, of our programs on the journey to self-sufficiency and to also accompany community partners who wanna help out. 
LSS NCA resettles hundreds, sometimes thousands of individuals each year. And each program participant and family has their own set of needs ranging from employment to healthcare, uh, to family worries, to trauma. LSS NCA staff work very hard to meet the needs of our program participants, but due to the number of people we are serving, we have a limited amount of time that we can dedicate to each individual. And that space is where our community partnerships make all the difference. Next slide, please. One of the primary ways LSS NCA is able to provide a warm welcome is through our good neighbor pro partners and our champion programs. Our GMP and champions ensure that each individual or family receives the specific support they need to reach self-sufficiency. You might be wondering what is involved in being a GMP or champion partner, which is another, another great thing about these programs is that there's a fair amount of flexibility based on what your group is able to do. But generally speaking, a group agrees to provide either a one-time apartment setup or an apartment set up with wraparound supports for three to six months. Those wraparound supports vary depending upon what the skill set of your congregation or group has. And we also have a one year co sponsorship commitment, which also includes rental assistance. There are many great things about the GMP and Champions program, but what makes it unique? is it allows for our community partners, all of you who wanna partner with us to really get to know our new neighbors and to meet their specific needs. Your group can raise funds and donations based on your resources, which can dovetail into our programs. As you can imagine, having people who care and who are living from their hearts matters greatly to our new neighbors. It affirms their worth, reminds them that others care and helps them feel less alone in this world, which is such a gift. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, there are three different levels of support within our GMP program and our champion programs um, requiring all different types of um, needs. And I'm just gonna quickly talk through this slide. So our, our um, most involved level is our Good Neighbors program. And this is specifically designed for congregations, for faith partners. And the commitment level of commitment time is one year. And you start at the very beginning, um, you, you meet your family and you start at that arrival point. And you agree to set up a home and provide all the furnishings and the household supplies. Those can all be either gently used items or brand new. And then you also agree to do su supporting adjustment needs for the first 90 days. Adjustment needs certainly vary. And again, as I said, they can um, reflect your group's gifts and skills, but they are things like transportation to and from doctor's appointments, um, helping register for classes, all of those kinds of things that might seem overwhelming as you've entered a new country. Um, which also includes our um, additional core areas of support. Also, you agree to pay full rent uh, for the family for three months and then partial rent for six months or until self-sustainability is reached. So that's our highest level of commitment, recognizing that all groups and congregations have different resources. We have two other levels of support. Champions level one is um, all for our congregations, colleagues, clubs, groups of friends. Um, it's a commitment level of about six months. Again, you meet your family right at the arrival point. Again, just like with our GMP program, uh, you agree to set up a home, provide all those furnishings and support some of the adjustment needs for 90 days. The primary difference between Champions Level 1 and our Good Neighbor program is uh, there's no rental assistance requirement with the Champions Level 1. And then finally, our Champions Level 2, which is really crucial given our greatest needs, is a commitment of a one-time apartment setup. And that means you'll collect all the furnishings and the household items required to set up a new home. 
and you'll set that up ahead of time before the family arrives so that when they do enter their new home, it feels welcoming to them. Um, and with all of those, the required furnishings, we, uh, we tell you what things are needed. And so you're not flying blind. We, we help you all the steps of the way. Next slide, please. So I'm sure you're wondering how to become a GMP partner or a champion. First, before I get into that, I do wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you have already done. You stepped up and supported our program participants as they have made their new homes. Um, as Kristen said, we could not do the work we do without your support. Second, I do wanna highlight that while the evacuation and arrival of refugees may not be making the news on a daily basis anymore, LSSNCA continues to have people and families arriving every single day. Some of the temporary supports that were in place right after the fall of Kabul are no longer viable, no longer available to us, but our need for your support is just as great, if not greater than before. And so I would really encourage you, if you wanna learn more, you can scan this little QR code and fill out our inquiry form. It doesn't require you, it doesn't tie you into anything. It just means that somebody on our team will reach out to you and answer your questions and then hook you into the program that will best suit your group. Next slide, please. And so now I'd like to bring it over to our CDO, our Chief Development Officer, Jacob Barkley. He'll talk a bit about other ways to support new neighbors with LSS and CDA. Great, thank you, Christine. Um, and, I, and I just wanna reiterate her, um, her gratitude and our gratitude for the many ways in which um, the, this community stepped up, uh, many of you who have stepped up um, in our greatest time of needs. We are we're experiencing this next phase, especially with our um, with our Afghan ally um, participants. Um, they are still in need of uh, we still need we still need support, and so we're so grateful that the, the, in the ways in which which we did so the ways like stepping up and helping us um, support the Ukrainians before they were eligible for ORR benefits. Um, you helped us provide housing assistance beyond the required length of time to ensure. Uh, stronger pathways towards self-sufficiency, uh, and also providing um, uh, medical assistance for some of our more severe cases and for those that are not eligible for government services. But as Christine said, um, we are still we are still in very much in, in need of, of support um, within the many areas that are not covered by government benefits and, and assistance, and that that our um, participants um, look to us to provide. Um, and, and so in addition to the GMP champions, there are multiple ways to get involved and I wanna, I wanna um, cover some of those. So next slide, please. Um, actually, you can go to the next slide too. <laughs> um, so one of, the, one of our um, biggest developments over the course of this, the past six months um, has been um, our new resource center that's located in Alexandria. Virginia, um, and we. This resource center is now. Um, it's. It was designed out of a, out of um, the the surge of compassion and support that we received during the the, uh, the fall of Kabul and beyond. Um, with with all of the the, the in kind support that we received, um, we really saw a need to be able to connect um, our community um, directly with our program participants. And so we opened a center in January, um, and it provides. Uh, the in-kind donation, like a shopping experience. So our, our clients sign up for um, in, in personalized individualized uh, shopping um, shopping um, experiences where they can get clothing, uh, food, baby essentials, personal hygiene, um, smaller appliances, all, uh, bedding, all that stuff. Um, we also um, are offering our many of our programming elements out of out of the resource center. So things like our ESL classes. Uh, we have a computer lab there. We're offering our legal and employment workshops. We just we just held our second um, of, of two workshops uh, yesterday and today. Uh, mental health support groups, uh, family events, um, and also uh, it's available for shared space um, for some of our local partners. And and uh, we're open to, to partnering with, with as many community partners as possible to maximize that space for 
for the the, the participants in which we we served. Um, and we're we're proud to say that we've served uh, over uh, 339 participants between just January and February alone. Next slide. Another way um, is our as our through our foster care program. Um, we are in need of additional foster care parents um, in a variety of capacities. Uh, one of which is our traditional um, and short-term foster care that provides um, homes for unaccompanied children ages five through 12 um, and who don't necessarily have their immigration status yet while their parent and guardian, their legal guardian is, is um, are, are, are seeking it in the, in the US. Um, so there's that, there's, that, there's that pathway. Then we're also looking for more longer term foster care for, for unaccompanied refugee minor children um, who um, other, they other, otherwise qualify for their immigration status, but they don't, um, they don't have a parent or relative available to them. So um, we're, we're, we, we serve um, in Virginia and in DC. Um, and we're expanding into Maryland. And so we're looking, uh, we're looking uh, for additional foster care uh, parents for that. Next slide. Another important way um, is through advocacy. LSSNCA is, is humbled uh, to work with families and individuals who are impacted by immigration and refugee crises. Um, and we don't, we don't take this work lightly at all. And our program participants uh, trust us uh, with their concerns, with their pains, and we want to be there also to celebrate their triumphs. Um, we operate from a place of trauma-informed care and a person-first um, human design approach. And with this trust comes the responsibility to, to share the microphone and to amplify, uh, amplify their stories and their voices to ensure that they and others are, are treated fairly, with dignity, and lawfully. Um, and so these are some of the issues that are that the impacts our, our program participants uh, that we work with daily. Um, the first, first being uh, with our Afghan allies. Um, the, just, uh, just briefly, uh, I'll touch on this. Um, the, the humanitarian parole status that thousands of Afghans received um, to enter the United States uh, doesn't provide uh, a, a way for them to apply for legal permanent residency. And so, the Bipartisan Afghan Adjustment Act was introduced in both the Senate and the House of Representatives and it, to create that, that legal pathway. Um, but right now, um, tens of thousands of Afghan allies are, are applying for asylum and still waiting in limbo because that, the Afghan Adjustment Act has not been passed, which would provide that, that, legal, that the legal pathway toward permanent residency. And so um, we're still continuing to advocate for this and we hope that you could join us um, by asking your congressional members to support the act. Um, um, also, a big note is today is, our Afghan, is the Afghan Adjustment Day of um, digital action. So please, 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 please share our posts or any of our, on any of our platforms or any other um, uh, agencies that are advocating for the, for the Afghan Adjustment Act. Um, to draw attention to the need for that, for the, the AAA to be passed. Um, an another area in which um, we're advocating is, is around asylum restrictions. So as many of you may or may not uh, know, on the February 21st of this year, the Biden administration announced a new proposed regulation titled Circumvention of Law Lawful Pathways, also referred to as like the transit ban or the, the asylum ban. Um, it's scheduled to take place in May, um, so we're looking. Uh, the The ban will require several changes for migrants arriving at the southern border um, who are seeking asylum, and it and it, it disregards America's national asylum laws and commitments to international human rights laws and treaties. And our moral obligation and tradition of welcoming people uh, escaping conflict and persecution. So we along with uh, more than 160 faith-based organizations and congregations across all faith traditions, sent a letter to the Biden administration last month and admonishing these policies. Uh, we, uh, and it's, it's, the, the letter is on uh, our uh, website if you'd like to take a look. Um, and we're, we're just, we're looking to um, continue to advocate. Uh, and there's a public comment period opening until um, March 27th. Um, so if you'd like to take a look, you can add your comment today. The, the QR code here on our um, is is the the uh, it, it will take you directly to our advocacy page on our website um, to look at these. 
And the last one that I'm just going to draw your attention to is around family detention. Um, on, on the New York Times on March 6th, um, um, reported that the Biden administration is, is considering reinstating family detention um, at the US-Mexico border. Um, so as you know, we, um, the Alice SNCA truly values strengthening and supporting families so they can stay together. Um, it, detention has long-term physical and psychological impacts on children and families. It is not a deterrent for someone who is fleeing life or death situations. And there are more humane and cost-effective ways to ensure that asylum seekers are able to meet their basic needs and attend required court hearings like community-based case management. So what we're asking you to do, if you so choose, is to visit our site and add your voice to the letter to the Biden administration so we can um, urge them to rebuild and restore a humane and just asylum system. Next slide. So with all of that, <laughs> Um, again, thank you. Uh, there are the these are uh, three different um, pathways to to getting involved. Um, you can donate as we as we continue to need uh, financial assistance um, to to address our greatest needs and gaps that are uh, ongoing and continue to to grow in demand. Um, you could uh, sign up to learn more about um, welcoming our new neighbors through our GMP and Champions program, um, and also. Um, a, a way to uh, get involved and look through like for, for more volunteer opportunities. So at this time, I'm going to um, open it up. I think we're uh, for questions. I'm bring the, I should bring the panel back. Okay, so okay, so the first question that I have is, are there plans to open a resource center in Maryland? Great question. Um, it is in our um, hopes and dreams uh, and in our and <laughs> along with building it into our strategic plan in the next uh, couple of years. Um, I will say that um, we we're, we're, we're right now as we work through the, um, with the, with the, the current site in Virginia, um, we're working with um, Set of we're working to build up a set of volunteers that are uh, that are bringing um, things back um, and forth to um, to Maryland. But yes, long term, we do want to open up a resource center in in Maryland. The next question: Are the employment and legal workshops open to people who are not LSSNCA clients? Uh, Kristen, do you want to take that one? Sure. You know. We would love to have all of our programs be open to everyone. Um, unfortunately, our employment programs right now are funded. Um, uh, the, the funding is restricted and the eligibility criteria is that they do need to be our clients. In terms of our legal services program, um, we do a fee for service program for clients that um, are not clients of LSSNCA, and that would be um, on a sliding scale. Um, and that would the legal services are uh, specific to immigration legal services. So um, you know, there might be times where we would be able to take the case ourselves. Um, for some more complex legal cases, we might refer to a, another local partner agency. Thank you, Kristen. The next question um, I can take, uh, it's do you plan, do you have plans for furniture donations at the Resource Center? Um, yes, uh, this is, uh, it's sort of a, so, one, right now we're, we partner with Homes on Borders um, who provide, and, and Hussein for Humanity, who do provide the larger furniture items when we do home setups and, and partner. Uh, we, are, um, we are looking to um, figure out how to accept uh, and, and which, which furniture items to accept down the road. Right now, the next big step is, is, um, is um, adding a, um, uh, we have non-perishables, but we're looking to add perishables as part of our, uh, our offerings at the Resource Center. Um, another, the next question is around how many people, Christine, this, Christine, this one is for you. How many people can uh, be in a GMP or champion group? Really, this depends on the what's comfortable for the group, uh, but we generally 
encourage, we generally encourage there to be one or two point people for your group so that we have a point of contact and we can streamline communications. Um, and then it's best to have at least five other folks who can help out, um, especially if you're in the champions level or the GMP level, because those wraparound services, recognizing that not everybody's able to, you know, always be available to drive or always be able to make meals or, or whatever needs that your family might have. If you are doing the champions level two, that really varies. I've had like couples that are able, you know, they're in a position that they're able to do that. And I've had congregations also. So that would be like, you know, eight to 10 folks. And that again, if you had questions about that, you could certainly reach out to us and we could talk about your specific congregation or your specific group and how your skills would best dovetail into uh, what we have to offer. Thank you. Um, Kristen, uh, Kristen, this one is, a, I'm, I'm going to share this one with you. So what are the greatest percentage of, Af of Afghan allies, immigrants, and refugees who settled in the DMV? I'll start um, with the Afghan allies because I, um, based, on, based on what we were settled last year, I can say that, um, that the largest concentration of Afghan allies that were resettled were in the, were in the Fairfax, Alexandria area. Um, and then uh, the Greenbelt Highsville area would be would be the next person would be the next largest area. Um, Kristen, do you want to add to that? Sure. Um, I'll just share that we have ten offices throughout the DC metro area, and I'll let you know where those offices are and what they do. Um, so, in our DC office is really our administrative headquarters. That's where we have our development team. That's where we have the executive team, finance. Um, human resources. And then we also do have in our DC office, our DC unaccompanied refugee minor program and our youth development and wellness program. Um, and then moving over to Virginia, um, as Jacob mentioned, our largest resettlement site is Fairfax. Um, and then we have one in Woodbridge as well. And then we just launched our resource center, as Jacob mentioned, in Alexandria. And then moving over to Maryland, um, our largest resettlement site in Maryland is in Greenville, but we did just open two more resettlement offices this year or last year that we're excited about. One is in Arbutus in Baltimore County and one is in Frederick. Um, and then we also have um, an office in Laurel where our unaccompanied refugee minor team places um, uh, unaccompanied refugee children in homes in Maryland. Um, we do plan to be able to uh, uh, merge that Arbutus and Laurel office in the future. Um, and then uh, just coming down the pike, um, we have a um, transitional foster care program that we're involved in in partnership with LIRS in Baltimore City. And then in uh, Fairfax, we also have, I forgot to mention, our unaccompanied refugee minor program in Fairfax. And that um, within that office, um, we will also be expanding to include transitional foster care, which is short-term foster care for unaccompanied children while they're still in custody of the Office of Refugee Resettlement, and we're helping them identify um, uh, family members to live within the U.S. So we are all over the DMV. Yeah, and the, other, the other thing I want to mention when, when, when Kristen was talking about all of our, all of our sites is that there's a, we, we resettle in a 50-mile radius from, from where, from where our, each one of our offices are. So um, that also, that also, that also dictates, you know, like that we, that we are, our our um our population um of our program participants are are resettled all over the all over the DMV. Um, the next question is, how do we meet the people we do sponsor? Um, Kristen or Christine? I can certainly answer that. Are you sponsor? Yeah. So once you've filled out an inquiry form and you've gone through an onboarding process where we talk to you about all the requirements of what you've agreed to do and you've done background checks um, based on what you feel like you're able to handle. So if you tell us that I think we can handle a family of up to six folks, we really try to match what you're able to support with our needs. And so we would pair you with a family and then um, whoever your community engagement specialist is would be in communication with you to let you know when that family's arrived and where they'll be living. Once we've done that, um, it's a conversation between the case manager, housing, the, the, the partner. There's a lot of uh, conversation back and forth to make sure that the pairing goes well and that everybody um, meets uh, at the apartment and you know where you're, you're at and that the 
program participants understand what the congregation or what the partner group is um, agreeing to do. Um, so that is a, a coordinated effort that um, LSS and CA, the community partner, and then the program participant all do together. Thank you. All right, next question is, um, Kristen, this is, good, this is for you. You mentioned foster care. What do you do to become a foster parent, care parent? Yeah, good question. So although the, um, the youth that we serve are referred by the Federal Office of Refugee Resettlement, the foster parents are licensed through each state and, and we are responsible for the licensing, but it would be the same requirements as if you were um, pursuing foster care with the state of Virginia or the state of Maryland or um, the District of Columbia. Um, and so if you look on our website um, and maybe, maybe one of my um, colleagues can drop the link in the chat for our foster parent orientations, we do have regular foster parent orientations and our team will share um, more about the process. Um, you know, it, it involves um, background checks, of course, and home studies, um, and it can take as quickly if everything works, works absolutely perfectly, it can take six weeks. Um, I would say that's probably, it's probably more like three months um, uh, because it does require training, home visits, um, and background checks. Great, thank you. The next question is, um, are there certain times you can drop items off of the resource center? I just, so I just dropped the resource center um, email in the chat um, for you to resource to ask our manager, um, Alyssa Clifford directly. But I will say that we are Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then it's the first and third Saturdays of every um, of every month from 10 to 1, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So I would I would suggest um, if like you can reach out to the resource center and coordinate a uh, drop-off time. Um, and that and it's a smooth and easy process. Um, it's super easy to access. Um, but I would I would uh, I would recommend reaching out to, to her directly and, and coordinating. But you feel free to also stop that in Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, 11 to 8, or the first and thir third Saturday from, from 10 to 1. Um, and it's also on our website. Um, all of our hours are on the website. Uh, who do I email about volunteering or co-sponsoring? You can email engagement, um, engagement at lssnca.org. Can, um, can I have someone drop that in the chat? Um, how can we provide the most support right now? Ooh, great, great question. One, you can sign up to be a GNP or champion. Uh, I think that is our number one um, need right now. And also financial support. Uh, we really, we have a lot of gaps that we're trying to fill. We have a lot of uh, um, people who come to us with, with severe needs that we just can't meet, especially those who are seeking asylum that don't qualify for benefits. And we really wanna be able to support. So financial support is really is really critical in that. Um, but I will say our big, one of our biggest, one, our biggest need is our GMP and, and Champions program because we can, we can always use that collective support. Um, Jacob, can I jump in here real quick? Please, yep. Yep. Um, just to uh, jump off of the GMP support, we we have been told that beginning in April, there'll be an uptick again in families. And so we really want to get ahead of that. Um, so if your congregation or your group is at all considering like what this might look at, I really encourage you to reach out to us because if we're able to pair families with community partners, that means we get to preserve um, money and resources that can go directly to the families and that they can use to get themselves on their feet. And they don't have to use um, some of those monies that they have um, because furnishings and other items have already been provided for them. And it's just a fabulous, fabulous way to um, help somebody feel at home. And so I really do encourage you, we're gonna have another uptick and we're going to need uh, support. We also, so we have a greatest needs page on our website. Um, so I would encourage you to go there. I would also encourage you to sign up for our, our monthly newsletter where, where we send out our, our most um, up-to-date information about programming, about impact stories, about what's going on, how you can get involved, um, like where, where, our, where, where we need, the, where, where we need um, the community support. Um, and I, I, you can um, definitely go there. 
Um, I mean, get, going to the website will allow, like you can, um, it's on the, um, it's under the how to help uh, um, slide um, or headline. Okay, the next question, do you accept car seats or strollers? Yes and yes, we do. Uh, we accept both. Uh, we, 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 even if they're gently used, we have a, we have a procedure for um, marking them and, and, and um, ensuring that they, that they're compliant. Um, but yes, we accept both. Um, but yeah. Um, I think that that does it for questions. Um, again, um, from on behalf of, of our entire agency um, and Kristen and Christine and I, uh, we just really want to say uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for carving out time on, on a busy Thursday um, to come meet with us and, and um, find out more. Um, and we, we, we can't do this without you. We can't do this work without our community. It takes, it takes everyone. Um, and we just really appreciate um, your continued interest and commitment um, to, to ensuring that, 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 um, that that, that our newest neighbors have um, the, the best path uh, possible forward. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I just wanna echo Jacob and just say, um, you know, I think our goal always in connecting the community with our new neighbors is that we create long lasting friendships and relationships that sustain um, longer than the time that we're able to serve clients. And so that we're, we're really helping to create long-term friendships and relationships and changing the community fabric by doing so. And thank you thank for being you. a part of it. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your evening.